time. I think I got it this time. In West Philadelphia, that born works. and raised. You're done. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I, I, that's around the playground is where I spent most of my days. There we go. Yep, chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool. And all shooting some b-ball outside, outside of the of school. school. And a couple of guys who hey. were up to no good. Hey. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got one little fight. My mom got scared. <laughs> Hey, welcome to a new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm Victor Dangerous, the hardest working man in comics. And I'm Ryan Stimor, the man with the best hair in comics. Uh, that's actually true. You really, really do. It it's is. very it's... fine. It's very sweet. It tastes it's good. very Bendis-esque. Yeah, very, very. But Colin it tastes Bunner. good. Your hair tastes better than his. I'm going to say that. Uh, no, it does. Having, it does. Yeah, having, having a couple, cuddled with you, you know, in the midnight hour, I can definitely say your hair tastes mm -hmm. better. Uh, yep. Not that I've cuddled Bendis that that gets weird. Um, we're just yeah, going to let that keep moving. We're going to let that keep moving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here we are again, back from our quarantine spaces, but the show must go on. How are you guys doing this week? Pretty decent. Got the word that Diamond, in theory, will begin shipping books again starting May 20th. That'll be the oh, first snap. new book Wednesday. Okay. Nice. Yep. Okay. So that's our tentative uh, back at the store date. Is that what we're mm -hmm. waiting for? Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Cause I think uh, like full retail in Ohio is set to open up on May twelfth. Okay, so I mean, can look somewhere between there and there. Got you. Will we have to get like special masks to record through? Something with like Ooh. I don't know, See, put a mic inside. We're, yeah, we're gonna have to set up social distancing on this. Yeah, set. yeah, we will. We'll have to be like yeah, yeah. Apart. There's gonna be yeah. I don't know how we're supposed to do that because yeah, we're gonna be employees. It's yeah, tricky. we'll figure that out. Okay. All right. We got time. We got time. We can tinker. We can tinker. Yeah. Um, on this episode, though, we are doing something a little different, uh, much the same way as we did last week, which was amazing. God, mm -hmm. I had such a fun time talking to Pruitt. It oh, was yeah. awesome. Absolutely awesome. Uh, but this time we're going to bring in Jesse Noble, who is the founder creator of Jim Simi City Comic Con. God, I can't even talk right now. Jim City Comic Con uh, in Dayton, Ohio. And uh we're going to we're going to pick his brain about, you know, why he started in this business and then how COVID-19 has affected his show, which was supposed to be last weekend and what he yeah. did. Instead. So uh, without any further ado, let's bring Jesse on. All right. He should be in here any second. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Jesse, what's going on, man? Not much. I'm just uh, I'm doing my kids' homework. Uh, that's <laughs> wait. I don't think that's quite the way that's supposed to go. No, I want to get a good. I want him to get a good grade. Well, okay, it, it all right. So I mean, listen, listen. Quarantine rules. You got to do what you got to do, man. I understand. Yeah. Thank right. you for uh, joining us tonight. That's first and foremost, and no, uh, especially we're interrupting homework time. We're bad <laughs> friends. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse, I don't know if you've met everyone in our in our show here. So we got Ryan Seymour. He is the owner and, and progenitor of Comic Town uh, these days. Right. He, he's kicking all the tail with his goodness. Yep. And of course, we've got Jeremy, who is our our producer extraordinaire. Yeah, pay no uh, attention he, to the man behind the curtain. No, right. no pay attention to him because he's he's <laughs> the guy. He's the one, two, and three. Um, but yeah, we we wanted to. Uh, Kind of chat you up a little bit about Jim City. Thank you for repping the shirt. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I just it was on the floor this morning. Whatever, that counts. Like that's clean. If it's in arm's reach, yep. that counts as clean. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, what I really wanted to get in a conversation piece is about the, I, I guess the three various uh, ecosystem pieces that we all represent. I'm a creator. Ryan's a, a retailer, and you're a convention mm -hmm. promoter. So that's like this this fun little you know trio of a. Uh, comic book right. goodness triumphant yeah yeah and yep. kind of talk about like how did you get into your side of things what made you get into comics to begin with oh man what what got me into comics to begin with was way back in the 70s my uncle went off to the military and bequeathed nah, that's the wrong word 
he left his comic books at my grandmother's house and she said, <laughs> stop bothering me, kid. And uh, gave me a stack of Spideys to, to read through. And then I was a collector from then on until somewhere around high school. Um, then I fell off right around Todd McFarlane time um, just because it was more difficult. And I was uh, more into music and girls at the time. So those oh, went, the, we went one direction. And then years yeah. later, years later, I came back to comics. I kind of walked into a shop and I was wondering, what's, what's Peter Parker up to these days? And um, <laughs> that's how I ended up with, uh, <laughs> that's how I ended up with uh, uh, picking up some, getting back into comics, essentially. She wants to make sure that homework's done. Exactly. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's checking she's on the me. Debo you over her assignment. What's up with my homework, Dad? What's going on? <laughs> but I so want to be plus. It can't be. It can't be too good. That's right. That's right. No, that's how they'll know we're cheating. Come on now, make it happen. Make it happen. So exactly. Spidey was your go-to guy. Oh yeah, for for years and years. And it, honestly, when I came back to it, um, Ultimate Spider-Man had just come out. It might have been in the '30s, and I wasn't a huge fan of um, Bendis. It was a little too quick paced. For, mm. For me or the, it was more dialogue than action that's sort of what i felt like then and i picked up hush um and that was you know the combination i was familiar with jim lee and i said this is what i like okay and um yeah th there's one uh, there's one uh, spread that's in uh 612 where batman lays out spider-man with the or superman with the kryptonite ring yep. and i said yes this is what i've been <laughs> missing all these years <laughs> um, and that's fall down at your feet like yes it was exactly it was one of those moments i, I wish i would have had a camera on me because it was literally like flip the page and you know <laughs> but that was that was my reintroduction uh, reintroduction to comics um but as being a, a a dealer i had made friends with a local shop um fearless readers in in dayton um and we were kind of lamenting the fact that there wasn't a show like there used to be back in when I was a kid there was Jubilees and I don't know that I ever went to a uh, mid-Ohio until after I came back to comics I'm not for sure um and we I saw so I said I can I can start doing that in the meantime I bought a huge uh, collection I found one on wasn't Craigslist it was the trading post then I don't think Craigslist was a thing <laughs> but it was literally 40 long boxes of comics were you know, what I consider to be a, a dumb price is so like practically going to throw them out kind of price. So then I had all these comics and I was like, well, what am I going to do with them? <laughs> so I went out on the road with them and did some shows and stuff. And I, I, I got tired of taking them out. So I said that that idea of putting on a show that that's happening. <laughs> and that's where it started. Nice. Um, nice. I, I'm not sure. Right, I did what's, over what's, again, <laughs> what's your what's your intro character? I don't know if we've ever talked about that. Oh, for me, uh, yeah. it would be it, probably it, either Conan. Conan was the first one that I picked picked out myself. Right. Uh, Spider Man, yeah, yeah, it'd be Spider Man for Marvel, Superman for DC. Um, yeah, Iron Man would would be for my brother Joel. Uh, but yeah, Spider Man would be because that's the one that, for whatever reason, I, I just I, I self identify as a Spidey fan more than more than anything else. I mean, he's so, the yeah. he's good the good choice, Jesse. Yeah, I was gonna say he's every man, right? Like yeah. everyone should be able to see themselves in in Parker. Like that's just oh, by yeah. design, and they did that so very well. Um, how long has Jim City actually been going on? Um, this would have been our fifteenth annual show. Okay. So it, it's been like that, and honestly, the the thing that's kept it going more than anything. People always ask me, like, "Well, how come Jim City's you know how to get so big so fast?" And it was the only one. True. We were the only one in, in, in Dayton. We were the outside of mid Ohio. There were no shows bringing in guests from afar and it just happened that way. But yeah, we're 15 years old. That's this awesome. Year. Which is amazing. Now, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Now this year, uh, obviously the COVID-19 situation put a little bit of a damper, but it, it didn't stop you under any circumstance. What, what did you end up coming up with for this year? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lay back on this at all, but it did get me. I was done. I, I, it broke my heart. I'm, I'm somebody that I crave the attention that <laughs> the gym city affords me. It's true. I respect that. I, I, I like being the, the, the guy that everyone says, Oh, you were awesome. You know, I like that. Um, and without that happening, I was, I had really hit a rut this, this past like month since I canceled it. 
Um, and to that end, some of my staff, Amanda, um, Amanda Gillum, she asked me early on, it's like, can we do something online? And I was just like, okay, you know, run with that ball. And the day before she said, hey, guess what? I'm doing it. And I said, doing, doing what? It's like the online thing. And I said, that's right. Um, let me know how that works out for you. And because I was done, I was, I, it beat me. I'm, right, right. I, I mean, I, understandably I, I, so, it's your baby. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was beaten and uh, she called me up and said, it's happening and it turned out fantastic. Um, I underestimated, number one, her, her ability to get it done um, and the, the response from the community. I, I really thought, I thought through my own lens thought of the show through my own lens for so long and that's face-to-face -face contact it's which is great you know being able to see somebody work in front of you being able to shop and be there in person um and i didn't and i realized something that i always knew but i was reminded of it is that the show is about the people and if the people are there then you have a show it's not it's 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 about the community it's not about what you can sell or what you can buy but it's about the people that are there with you. And we had all those elements and Amanda brought that together for us. And I was, um, I was just long for the ride. The whole time I, I was sitting there watching everything saying, this is amazing. I, I would have never done this. So kudos to her for getting it done. She only thing that she used for me was the logo. And that's the fact, that's the truth. Okay. All right. I mean, you, you get some kudos for having hired her, obviously. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. smart insight on your part. So don't, don't knock yourself completely out of the game there. In um, retrospect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Years later, eh, it turned out okay. You're like, oh, that did work out. <laughs> yes. Um, no, and thank you for, for that. Uh, thanks to Amanda, absolutely. I was one of the uh, presenters on Sunday, um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, it, I think this is now going to change the way a lot of people move forward in their considerations of conventions. Is this going to be something that you want to add in consistently? Is this kind of online presence? The, um, what I'm the idea that we're kicking around right now um since amanda you know jumped off with it we're absolutely taking control now to try and mess it up but we're thinking that we should um this sort of thing would be great as a primer throughout the year for gem city um maybe do two other ones maybe not to that extent or maybe a small series that is a primer to the event and um i'd like to figure out a way that we can make this sort of thing mobile at the show to where there is, um, there is the physical show with people there in line, and then there's a host going around doing what she did for uh, online. Um, right. I remember, I can't remember the name of the TV sh or the channel, but on cable, when they would go to the shows, it might've been Wizard TV or something like that, or um, no, that never- Con TV, they did that for a little bit. Yeah, where yeah. they were, you know, and they would bring people up in interviewing, but this would be more something like that and I think the technology has just gotten to the point now where it's cheap enough to where um, dilettante users like me or like um, we can afford to jump into doing this. So I'd like to see that become a larger part of the, the show. Absolutely. Well, will it change how you book guests? Like in, in, in the concept, from the concept of you can just bring them in through, through social media. Are you going to go after people that might be over in the UK or, or in Canada so, or does it open up the world to you? Uh, to, to that end, it absolutely does. Um, but there again, and maybe I'm wrong in thinking this, but I think that if, if I were to bring in a big guest, you'd want to be there in front of them to see that. But, um, but where it might benefit the show more is if we brought in um, you know, somebody from Columbus into the primer and then they'll, they're at the show. Um, but yeah, we'd love to do stuff with Barry. I know Barry's uh, overseas or bringing, if, if he's going to be a part of the show in physical form that year, that would be great to do. Um, Absolutely. But there again, I still can't afford to, to bring in the, you know, the fly people. Most people are really great about coming and there's not, there's not a lot of people that ask for exorbitant amounts of money, but it's about the, the accommodations. Um, you know, a flight from England is expensive. A flight from the West Coast is expensive. And I always feel bad about West Coast people because you know, it puts them you know, three hours behind. They're here right. just long enough to, to fly back and be out of sorts in front of their board for a while. But um, yeah, I think seeing this work is, is gonna change how a lot of shows work in, in 
or just do business. Absolutely. Now, I mean, obviously the COVID-19 situation was a doozy, but I thought last year was going to be one of the hardest things to overcome ever because Jim City came out the exact same weekend as the premiere of Endgame. Is there, like, how is it that you keep coming up against these crazy situations that, like, what are you doing? Are, are you are you upsetting the Comic-Con gods? What's going on? I don't, I don't know what it is. What I do is I look for adversity and I run right at it. <laughs> Well said. Because I'm not, I'm not very bright. No, um, Gem, Gem Cities um, is not a, I hate to tell people this because we're, we just don't throw around as much weight as we look like. So the convention says, you've got, uh, you can't have their, your first choice because we have a car show. Uh, you can't have your second choice because uh, we're having a faucet convention or, you know, wow. not, not literally that, but then, you know, it's, there's, <clears throat> there's something else there. And as much as I'd like to say that we're a big show, the faucet convention might bring in 30,000 people into, in, into, into the area. So we're kind of at their, at their beck and call. You still do such a great job though, that I think that uh, the, the lack of a physical show this year um, is going to really see a huge push for attendance come next year. Is that the homework? Is, are we, are we checking the homework? Are we seeing how good it is? We're, we're See, going through stuff. We're making that's a, sure that's there's a seal of approval <laughs> if I ever saw it. Tight. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it's uh, commonly fell in the spring. Um, so it just kind of was, that wasn't quite a, a goal of yours. It just kind of was a happenstance. I thought it was one of the greatest things about Jim City. Oh, the, originally we always wanted to be in the spring. We always aimed for uh, the week before or after taxes because either people have extra money or they don't ha or, or they got their check you know that, or they got their refund that's where we always wanted to be um since we've moved um to the convention center we're swinging swimming in a bigger pool um so we, we try to be in that first or quarter right on the edge there and we've gone as early as as march you know to to accommodate other events that they have in there um yes yeah, so, i mean weekend to weekend in, in the in may and april they kind of tell us when, what they got for us. You still did a great job, though. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, even last year, going up against Endgame, um, still great attendance, lots of people that were interested. Um, does, it, does it become difficult for you to maintain Jim City's uh, communication or promotions throughout the rest of the year? I mean, obviously, you have Champion City now that you can kind of supplement in between. But what about, like, focusing on Jim City in, you know, the latter part of the year? Is that difficult? Um, over the years, I've sort of developed a way to get into people's new news feeds. Um, like I, I like to start promoting Gem City at Champion City. That's when I like to get out the name. So people start knowing to look. That's when this stuff's going to start being in the stores. That's when the bookmarks are going to be out. Um, and if there's an area that I have slacked on, it is the time after Gem City to Champion City. Um, that, that, that's an area where I'm usually just burnt out. It takes about 18 months to put on um, um, Gem City, just because I'm one part lazy, you know, I start a little bit and then do a little bit and then let it slack off. Um, so there's a probably about a two month period over the summer, the late spring and summer, where I don't want to look at a comic, I don't want to think about doing this, I don't want to think about doing that, and it's um, so that's that's the part that I've, I've always missed. Um, I've tried a few different things, like doing a newsletter. That there again, the problem is you know creating content. I don't have that sort of thing. Um, but now seeing how this convention online worked out, I'd like to see that sort of thing replace my dead sp spaces to where Gem City is something that is always in, um, you're always, hopefully always going to see something in your news feed that is, is branded Gem City, whether it's a, an interview with this person or we're doing a mini con with these four people, uh, you know, over six hours or whatever. Um, nice. I'm starting to see, see the and I'm the last person that's been able to see it. I'm the last one to know, but I'm just starting to see the power of the internet. Have you seen this thing? <laughs> it's like everything. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. You know, <laughs> doing a couple things here and there. I don't know if it's going to take off, but right now it's, uh, <laughs> all the kids are watching it. Right. Would you ever partner with a, a out of city convention that's still within the proximity to kind of do like a, sister promotion obviously oh, yeah. comic town being one of the largest you know uh shops in columbus partnering with the sister yeah. city like you know dayton and and jesse 
I think that would be huge opportunities to oh, kind of yeah, I'd, I'd be 100 percent on board. Because it's always looking, spot. We're, we're always looking for for more partners and um, Gem City is one thing, but we've we have other shows in some other states, um, and we found the community all over comics. Of the community for comics has always been very very nice. They're always very willing to come in and partner with you because they know that you know, I'm not coming into your town or, or coming to steal your business because I'm only there one day. The rest of the year, everybody's yours. You know, and that's how new print, new readers, you know, they keep going. I might have, I'm in there for, in your shop or in your city for one day, you got them the rest of the year. And a lot of shops realize that. They try to partner as when we're in Indianapolis or we're in Detroit or we're in Springfield. Um, they've been great. Shops have been great with few exceptions. Yeah, I think we can it's, explain it's, that love. Yeah, it's a great way as a shop set up at an event. It gives that shop a chance to boost their signal, to get their brand in front of people. So, yeah, you, you, you lose out one day of sales, but you know you make up, like you said, the other 364 days. So, yeah, I mean, that's... And early on, because uh, we, we um, my partner at the time was had Fearless Readers in Dayton, and his concern was is that for one day a year, every person who had a file in Dayton was going to be in one place in front of all the other stores, you know? <laughs> so it gives, it gives all the stores an opportunity to win other people's file customers. Um, and as it turned out that it actually helped keep people in, in comics. Cause usually I, 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 this is, I'm not sure I, I know this for sure, but this is how it feels. So the truthfulness of it might not be there, but, Usually if someone drops a file, they're gone. They're out of comics for five years or, or three years. They're just, they're just gone. But if you switch, you know, your, your, your file, you have a file over here. And for one reason or another, you come over here, you haven't left comics. You eventually come back. Um, and I think st stores understood that. And it was a way to keep people in comics by having an event. And they were great um, in, in Dayton. It was the one time we could get everybody together in the same room. Um, you know, without the old feuds coming up and stuff like that. <laughs> but shops are the lifeblood of the industry. Um, shows, not so much. Shows, maybe, I'm, I wouldn't even say a shot in the arm, but shows are part of it. But shops are, are, are the ground zero for comics. I definitely agree about the importance of shops. I do think shows are becoming a lot more important in the in the geek ecosystem than they've ever been before um because i think for the most part it allows for um that entrance place that maybe somebody might be too afraid to jump into a shop but they'll go to a convention through you know proximity oh i like this thing oh i can learn about this it's a nice like gateway drug if you will to what the shop culture will be so i think that's uh i think they fit hand in hand perfectly oh for sure and yeah. and yeah, it's a smorgasbord Right. Right. And shops, shops can be intimidating. Um, I know when I came back to, to, to comics, there were a couple of shops that when I went in, I was just like, these, the, the, these people are over my head. They're talking about things I've never read. I feel like the uncool kid in a comic book shop. Who is that guy? You know? Um, and so you travel around and you, you, you have to really want it, but you, you find a culture or shop culture that is to your liking. And usually it's the owner, whoever's working behind the cash register. If you like that person, that's your shop. You'll travel, you, you know. Um, I know people that have shops in their town and they travel 40 miles to go to the shop they like. Right. You know, and it's, and, and so getting really? over that, a show is a good way to hurdle that. I can definitely agree with that. Yeah, because uh, like Comic Town was already on the north side of town and I live on the south side. And when you guys moved to the new location, you were norther still. I'm like, yeah, no, I still go to, I still go to Comic Town. People are like, wait, there's like six other shops in between. I was like, are there really? I don't know. That's, that's my shop. That's where I'm going. You know, it all, it's connection. It's who, who, right. who you connect with on a personal level the best. Yep. There are some amazing shops in like Dayton and Cincy and Columbus. Right. And like right. you said, it, it, whoever I like is who I will go to. It's yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, okay. I want to dish a little bit. I got to, I got to, I got this opportunity. I want to get in. I want to know who has been your favorite comic book guest that you've had at a show. Um, 
gosh, that is that is really, really difficult. Yeah, I know, I like, right? Like that's gonna be a real like knuckle biter question right there. The, the, there's a couple of them. The first one, I'll, I'll put them in different categories. The one okay. that made me fanboy the most was Stan Sakai. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Yeah, I love uh, Yasagi. And when he was there, I got to you know, stand behind him and act cool. And it was real difficult to act cool <laughs> while he's sitting there working in front of people. Um, and then there's people who I've, lo uh, you know, I've loved their work for a long, long time. And when they were interested in coming to the show, someone like Mark Wade, who, you know, seemed like he was like this guy up on a hill that if Mark Wade wouldn't even step foot into Dayton, you know, um, sort of thing. And then he was there for years because, you right. know, he, he lived over in Indiana and moved over to Indiana and we became really good friends. You know, so I almost don't think of him as Mark Wade, the creator anymore. I think it was Mark Wade, the, the guy who I can call, you know, <laughs> um, so Mark was great. And then there's people that I feel like I owe a lot to. Um, there's a early on the show was sort of on the bubble. We hadn't made a two, a two day show yet. Um, and I got Jim Valentino to come to from California to a yep. one day show. I had read, you know, that was, those books were when, when I was in high school. Um, and he seemed like there again, the pinnacle and he was, just fantastic with me. And he saw what was, what we were doing there. He goes, there's no guests here. You know, there's, there's me and another person that are, you know, are, you know, big publisher, whatever, and we're having a great day and we're able, and everyone's, he saw it for what it was. Um, he, and he saw through, he saw through me in an instant. He's like, I think you're doing what you're doing is right. I think what's happening here is right. I don't know if you're going to, you're going to make it, but, <laughs> but you're doing it right. Um, and that vote of confidence is what probably, made it easier for me to make that show a two day show from a one day show. Um, so those are the people, and I know there's a myriad of other ones that, you know, everybody has great memories with. And I honestly, I've only run into one guest I wouldn't invite back. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it, but yeah, no, 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 not that kind of dish, not that kind of dish. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we aim for the positivity. Um, yeah. and, and it's funny too, because I remember what was that? Uh, 2010 that Valentina was there. Uh -huh. Um, literally okay so it was it was your show and then i want to say either the next week or the week after was c2e2 C2E2. and so i go to your show C2E2. yeah it was the very first one i go to your show go out to c2e2 and jim remembered seeing me at jim city and we started hanging out um we were doing the bar con stuff and it was literally his push i kid you not uh he was the one that was like have you seen kick ass yet and i was like no and he's like go see kick-ass so i literally was late to the show the next day because i went to go see kick-ass because jim valentino told me to <laughs> that night before um because of you so you're you're making those great connections man it's it's pretty awesome definitely awesome the, the, the you know the degrees of separation in comic books are shorter than seven it's a real small com community of creators and um and that's that's one thing i never would have thought going into this i thought that you know there's there's, you know, myriads of people over there, but everybody knows each other. Yep. Um, and, and it's just a really, really small community. So if you put on a good show or you give people a good time or you're respectful of them, they all talk to each other. And they're like, you know who isn't a jerk? That Jesse nope. guy in Dayton is not a complete jerk. <laughs> you know, and, then, and that, that's helped a lot too. Um, and Mark, Mark tells people all the time, I'm not a complete jerk. And he's, he's helped me bring guests that way. So I can say... Kevin Eastman, um, would you like to come to our show? You're that guy that Mark said is not a complete jerk. <laughs> it's like, that's me. That is me. Um, You're absolutely right. Yeah. So that's just awesome. don't be a complete jerk. That's it. Um, now, in the transition of going from one day to two day, you actually changed locations. First starting off at the Nutter Center. Uh, at Well, not even at the Nutter Center. No, you start off in the uh, Student Center at Wright State. So right. did you we have a connection the, with them? The student Union. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my day job is is at the the university. That's my day job. Um, okay. And so, in that building where we used to have the the convention, yeah, at the student, that's where my office is. Still is. I I don't know. Actually, I haven't been there in six weeks, but that's where <laughs> where the office is. And I worked there, um, and I knew everybody in the building and stuff there and at the Nutter Center. So staying at Wright State, um, at one point there was a there was an employee discount. Um, that's one of the reasons we were there. And I do think it's one of the more premier venues um, at, in, in Dayton. Um, yeah. The transition of, I'm sorry, well, there was a question. Um, 
I was, I was going to go off on a tangent. No, no, um, no, that's fine. Yeah, that, but that was my connection with the, yeah, that was my connection with the, with White State. That's why it started there, um, and it was also a place where they would with the rules. Like I wouldn't have to call somebody or an electrician to get some pipe and drape put up. I had right. the keys to the building. I could just go get an extra. <laughs> I could do that there and at the Nutter Center. Yeah, uh, moved to the, oh, it was fantastic. I, except for I would come in at 12 o'clock the night before and stay up for, you know, 48 hours. I mean, yeah, that, uh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> right. And when we moved to the convention center downtown, um, a bunch of things happened that were fantastic. One of them, I didn't have to do all that work anymore. I didn't have to <laughs> in their union hall. I didn't have to set up the tables and chairs. I still do, but. Don't have great, to. I don't have to, it just has to be done right. And right. We've, had, we've had some issues yeah. there. Um, um, and at the end of the show, when we're at the, at the Nutter Center, since it's more, it was, had more space to it, I was doing a lot of taxi servicing. This is right before Uber and stuff like that. So like at the end of the convention, I would take the convention, the people over to the hotel, take them to dinner, take them to wherever they're going. So I had a cadre of friends and a couple chauffeurs pushing people all around stuff like that. And when we moved downtown, it's like, Here's the hotel. Over there's all the restaurants. I might see you in the morning. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, that, you're like, and I'm out. I'm exactly. Out. It was, um, <laughs> and they appreciate it a lot more because I think because, you know, they're not they're not beholden to where I'm going to take them, or the experience that they're going to have is is not dictated by me. Um, it's like we can go to Chili's and then back to the hotel. You know, here it's you know there's a little bit of nightlife in Dayton into where. You know, there's brew pubs and there's pizza places and there's, right. you know, a French restaurant right down there. And, you know, one of the best, you know, steakhouses in the country is across the street. And, right. you know, if that's what you're into, then it's all there for you. And I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to take you there. So who's on your, your wish list for future guests? Um, if I had, I would love to bring uh, Jimmy um, Palmati and Amanda Connor back. Um, it, it was it was a long time for me working with them to find wait for our, the stars to align. Right. Um, I've been talking to people at um, Paper Films, uh, Patrick Wedge, um, and I believe he's from Ohio here somewhere. But um, he knew of the show, and it was every time I'd call him, he'd be like, "Nah, they're going to be in Europe," or "No, they just got married," or "No, they're uh, you know we're not do, doing travel right now." And it was four or five years, and then this year all the stars aligned, and then the COVID happened. Right. Um, and they were great and they were magnanimous, but I don't know if the stars are going to align again next year. My guess is with all this, a lot of people are going to be hesitant to travel. Right. Um, some of the people that I'm talking to that it from Europe that I've always wanted to come, they're like, I don't know if I want to travel to America. <laughs> you know, there's all the, there, there's, I mean, <laughs> I understand. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, not just the, the normal American stuff, but it's the, we're a hot spot now. Right. We're, mm -hmm. here. We're number one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Woo -hoo! Right. But as far excited. as like wish list, I'd like to bring Stan back. Um, I'd like to see bring Bendis back to Ohio. God, man, uh, I haven't seen him at an, an Ohio show. It's been years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Was and I don't Ohio know that, yeah. I think it was like mid Ohio when it was still up at Easton. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd like no, to... No, no, no. I'm lying. I'm totally lying. No, no, no. He was just at a, a, a Columbus Crossroads. I'm sorry. I lied. Yeah. He totally no, was. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's funny, too, because they, they brought in Mike Magnola, and I actually, I don't want to say I know him, but I had sent him and his wife emails. We had corresponded a couple of years. Nice. And they're always like, yeah, we'd love to come to Dayton, but no. <laughs> 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 you know, cause, well, because, you know, He's, he's big time um, right. and, and that, that was always it and then he was at uh, the crossroads and I was just like ah oh, that's what they wanted right um, but um, um, Walter Simon uh, Simonson and Louise yeah. I would love to bring them in and I get a chance to see them in at Baltimore um, and they're always like yeah if it lines up and you know it's not fun to I mean it um, happens it happens sometimes and stuff but they're super friendly about it they're like it's all about timing and I was like I know Right. <laughs> I can read between the lines. Um, and then from overseas, um, I'm blanking on his name now. Um, I can't remember. What, what did he do? 
he's done everything, mostly Iron Man. He's a really fine illustrator. He's friends with Mark Brooks, uh, Ari. Uh, is it Avi Ravnoff? Ravnoff? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I know he, yeah. he's, he's in England now and he had, he had grown up um, in Sarajevo and in Seattle. Yeah. And the, the, the peace accords that ended that war were signed here in Dayton. It worked oh, wow. out here. And we had talked to uh, him and huh. his girlfriend at the time or his wife. They, they wanted to come visit the museum and stuff like that. And it, we just haven't been able to make it happen yet. You might um, have to pull some strings, see who we know, see if we can make that happen for you. Definitely. Right. It, well, it, it's, it's between the timing and the cost of it. And I know that, that especially with someone like him, it's people that are in demand. You know, it's hard to travel that far, get you your body all out of sorts. Right. And then go back to working because, you know, he, I don't know what his page rate is or, but, or for a cover. But he could do that at home, or he could put it off on the shelf for a while, come to Dayton for a while, come home, recover, and then put it, bring it back out. And I mean, if we make sure that he has a great show, that's worth it. Right? I, I, I think that wherever he goes, he could have a good show. And of a course. lot of times, I know he, uh, he has family still in the States. I think uh, he has a sister in Chicago, and foster families are people that he knows from high school nice. out on the West Coast and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, in fact, I thought he was living in the West Coast when I approached him and she was like yeah let's just talk about getting a flight i was like no problem you fly out of SeaTac, and you're like uh no no we're out of london now and i was like ah ah okay let me check my uh let me see if it works out right let me, let me right. check the timing <laughs> <laughs> but I, w I would love that someone uh th those are kind of my, my my wish list right now and that nice. changes um and the people that i really love the, the creators that i really love um like peter bag he came the one year. Um, I'd like to get some underground artists. Um, um, uh, Kim uh, or, or Kitchen, Dennis Kitchen. I'd like okay. to have him come through and me because he, he's been in publishing for so long. Uh, nice. Roy Thomas is someone who I think is in North Carolina. And I know he doesn't want to get out to shows. He's older and he doesn't, doesn't feel like, but I've, I've talked to him a couple of times at Heroes. Um, and everybody who's ever told me about Roy Thomas is like, all the stories are true. He's absolutely wow. the sweetest, nicest guy you'd ever want to know. And, you know, and there's, and there's, that's it. That's the end of the story with him. And there I'd love is. to have him out to the show. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. But that's, I, that's my list. I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> no, nah, we can, we can, we can do that. We know people. We got, people. we got some strings. We'll tug them. Nice. You know, absolutely. Right. Do you have any other questions before, uh, we let Jesse go back to doing his kids' homework. Doing the homework. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, right? No, I, I think that covers everything. Okay. All right. Well, dude, thank you so very much for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. Um, again, like, Gym City was such a phenomenal success this past weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed being a part of it. And as I said during my uh, stream, it's been an, a super important show to my career. Um, I've met some of my collaborators there, uh, the expanse of what is Central Ohio as a comics community, I really understood there, and uh, it's, it's been phenomenal. So thank you so very much for all that you've done thus far and ongoing, uh, for me especially, and thank you. Oh, not at all. Thank you for having me here, and thanks for being fans of the show, friends of the of show. Course. All of course. Right. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, man. Right. Much appreciate that. You have a good night. Love all peace right. to all the children's, and uh, tell your wife I said hello as well. I will. Do I sign out or are you just going to boot me? Uh, uh, either way. <laughs> yeah, however you want to. However you want <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Bye. Thank you, Jesse. If I can figure out how. Man, such this a is cool awkward. dude. This is awkward now. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> just right. watch and just watch like, you. I hate to do it. I hate to <laughs> do it. in your nose. Oh. There we go. <laughs> such a cool dude. Um, the show oh, is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I definitely think you guys, if you had an alliance between Comic Town and Gem City, that would be something special. Yeah, yeah, it would it would change the yeah. game. Far far enough apart, yet close enough together. Exactly, and a lot exactly. can be done. And I mean, Gem City, Comic Town, the sister cityness of it sounds perfect. So I think it could be dope. I think it could. Be oh dope. yeah, and then Dayton Kettering's where Stace is from. Oh well, see, look, it's like a family it's meant affair. to be. Like that's yeah. We should have been yeah, done this. Dang, yeah, I'm, I'm slipping. <laughs> it's yeah. my fault. You can blame me. You can blame me. It's my fault. Uh, but thank you guys for checking out the show. We thoroughly appreciate it. This was 
so much fun and we're going to do even more behind the scenes stuff while we wait to get back into the actual shop and read some books i miss books I what are books to I miss them. you know weekly goodness yeah it's so do, 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 do. hard to <laughs> say goodbye <laughs>